A very pleasant good afternoon to you and happy 2023 signing day. I'm Tim Gosen along with head coach Jeff Bowen and we're here to talk about the 10th signing class of Arizona Christian football and coach I know this is the a day for you that uh, it's a year in the making you you recruit all year long and you come to this day and you get to talk about the now 50 guys that we have ready to sign and play we believe that number will change um, probably go up even more uh, as, as we get closer to the season but right now we're talking about 50 guys that have signed to play for ACU football and coach welcome to signing day I know this is a day where you're kind of like whoo but your thoughts on signing day no it's a it's a big day for our program it's another group of uh, young men that are committed to uh, you know Arizona Christian and our football program and our culture and then it's also exciting for them just uh, taking another step on their their football journey their academic journey and for us obviously their faith journey it's a big year for you, this being the 10th season uh, coming up next year for ACU football. Uh, move to the Frontier Conference. So uh, you always talk about, uh, as we've talked through the years, oh, I like this recruiting class, I like this recruiting class. We've talked about this class, and you've said that the dudes that you have in this group are more than you've ever had, and that's a testament to, hey, you're going to the Frontier. Hey, you've won four conference championships in your first nine seasons. Uh, you've been to the NEI football championship series a couple times. So as you're looking at these 50 guys that are coming, what are your quick thoughts on those? Well, I think it's a, a well-rounded group. We're not done yet, but these uh, these 50 young men that we have signed as of uh, this afternoon at noon, um, they fill a lot of needs uh, physically. We're continuing to develop our, our, uh, our team and uh, what we need, hopefully, uh, moving forward to uh, compete at, at a national level. So we're, we're excited about the young men that we brought in. We're excited about the, uh, the programs that we were able to get into this year and, and get some of their players uh, and, and from, um, from around the country too. So uh, it was overall, it was a, it, the, the staff did a phenomenal job uh, recruiting as usual. Um, real proud of them and their efforts. They worked their tails off and, uh, and I think we got a pretty good group here. So these are some of the numbers for the 50 guys that are coming. 22 are signed up to play defense, uh, three special teams players, and 25 guys coming to play offense. Uh, the, the key numbers there, defensive backs, you bring in 12, which is your biggest position group, and then you bring in 11 receivers so they can duke it out on each side of the, of the football. Of course, with a spread offense, you need lots of receivers. Um, some other numbers, previous schools, high school, looks like 30 high school guys coming in, and then 10 from four-year transfers and 10 from uh, two-year transfers. And then states, uh, you break down the 50. California actually takes over as your top recruiting state with 18. Arizona, uh, uh, 17 of those guys uh, come from local, and then it breaks down like three from Texas, three from Washington, and uh, several states with one. So big gamut all over the place, as you talked about. How did you get some of these guys from California that aren't in Arizona? Well, um, we're balanced up. If you look at our roster, predominantly we're we're about thirty-five to thirty-nine percent Arizona, thirty-three-ish percent California, and about thirty percent uh, the other states. That's been our our traditional breakdown the last few years since we've kind of hit an equilibrium on where we're recruiting and stuff. Um, obviously, Arizona is always going to be. Our number one focus, um, you know, it's in our name, our coaching staff, a majority of them are Arizona coaches, um, and we take great pride in that. California has always been uh, big for us. They're right next door. Uh, the numbers are great. They have a, a lot of uh, a talent uh, in the state, and uh, so, so that's always going to be right there with us. And then we've made a lot of inroads into different areas and stuff, that, so we're really excited about it. Like... Uh, the power programs we were able to get into this year um, and, and get recruits out of, not just go visit them, but we actually got some uh, young men out of there. We, we got a, young, a running back out of Chandler High School this year. We got a receiver, uh, Shannon Coulter, out of Saguaro. Um, in California, one of the premier programs in California, Corona uh, Centennial. And we got uh, Adam Klump from there, a kicker punter. Uh, Edison High School in uh around the Huntington Beach area. We got a, a young man we're really excited about, Carter Hogue, uh, is a 
is a running back, uh, defensive back. He'll probably play on the defensive side of the ball for us. He was a first teamer on both sides of the ball there. And then in, in some of the other states, we hit uh, Cooper High School in Texas where we got Malik Jackson, a receiver. Um, we got into Bellevue High School in Washington, which is a predominant powerhouse in Washington. And we were able to get uh, Kalani Masunu out of there, a really, really impactful defensive lineman we're really excited about. And then we uh, we even traveled into Hawaii. Uh, Coach uh, Moore's got connections in Hawaii, and we were able to pull some young men out of uh, Hawaii and, and St. Louis, which is the dominant high school in Hawaii. Um, um, Ka'ave uh, Batoon as uh, the DB out of there, and Alakai uh, Molina, uh, another defensive lineman out of St. Louis. So we're hitting the big programs, and we're, we've been able to pull some some players out of there. And and then we've also, you know, we're scouring all the levels, but we're pleased that we were able to actually get in there and get some of those players this year. All right, well, let's kind of break it down. Uh, you've kind of touched on some of them, but let's break it down a little bit. And we'll mix it up this year. We'll start special teams. You mentioned they got the kicker from Centennial, uh, obviously a powerhouse out there uh, in Corona. Uh, I know about them a little bit uh, from years past. Uh, but so special teams, uh, that's an area that can win and lose some games for you. We saw that many times this year where the field got flipped and, a, you know, it turns into a short touchdown or something like that. Uh, so special teams, what do you like <coughs> that you have coming? Well, special teams have always been big for us just because um, that's where I first cut my teeth as a coordinator. So special teams were always important. And then we look at what we have. We needed to, to uh, bring in a, a long snapper and a good one, and we uh, were able to get that um, out, out of uh, Willow Canyon here in the Valley when we picked up uh, Ryan Carter. He's one of the top long snappers in the state. Um, and that that's key for us because anybody that watches us and our and what we do with, from our punt formation and the type of, you know, not just punting the ball but fakes out of it and doing different things that we like to do, uh, it all st- starts with the snap. So picking up Ryan was huge. Uh, Adam Klump is a kicker-punter combo guy out of uh, Centennial Corona, uh, which is a, a, another nice pickup. And then we picked up a mid-year. Uh, well, we signed a mid-year. He'll be here in the fall. Uh, Martin Fonneau, uh, sorry, Fontenot, um, and he's a, a punting specialist. So uh, we're, we're short up there a little bit. We've still got a couple. I can't talk about a few more guys. We're waiting on some paperwork, but i um, excited about another uh, another kicker that we may get in. Uh, but we definitely shored up the, the, sp- uh, the special teams, uh, mainly just because of uh, graduation and you know, that's just part of the game. That's just the way it works. Yep. So, actually, Coach, we, we were remiss to talk about the couple of guys. There's like 14 or 15 guys that already came and are here in the spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about those guys, and then we'll get into the offense, defense. Um, yeah, the 14 guys we, we got in uh, working hard. We were out there this morning with our, our Wednesday, Competition Wednesday, and, and they were getting after it, and they're, they're blending in well with, with our new – our new guys are blending in well with our, our veterans. Um, you know, on the offensive side, um, uh, I could rattle off a bunch, but Chase Tompkins is a wide receiver. We got out of Dort, a transfer, uh, and Dort's a really good program, and he played a, uh, he started a lot of games for him last year as a freshman. So he's a transfer pickup for us, and he's doing a nice job. A uh, couple guys out of Northwest Missouri State that we – we picked up one's on campus right now one will be here in the fall and um so that's justin wright a running back and uh tyree sorrels the wide receiver and he'll be here in the fall um let's see who uh, well we got a nice uh db transfer dominic washington out of west hills community college uh one of the corners he's progressing nicely um ben hurt uh one of the the big offensive linemen we'll see uh tackle guard combo guy uh we're excited about that and um we'll just kind of see how they all develop I, I know it's only a half hour show so i can't go through everybody but um so the 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 mid-year transfers that are in are doing a really nice job uh integrating into our culture and and uh what we do well it's always uh important to get those guys you love uh, you always talk about you love getting those guys in because they get a, a leg up on getting to know your your team, getting to know your culture, getting to know the 12 pillars of, you know, and mm-hmm. your groups and your tribes and all of that stuff that goes along with ACU football. 
and then they're ready to accept those guys that are coming. We talked about special teams. You've kind of touched on some of the offensive guys. Let's talk the offensive side of the ball. Uh, anybody that you haven't touched on uh, yet that is like a big find um, for you? For the incoming freshmen, we uh, – we picked up a young man named Josh Bell out of Mount uh, out of Mount Carmel in San Diego. He was the number one passer in San Diego. Uh, he put up some big numbers and spins it well. Um, he's a nice pickup. Um, Owen Galasso, a tight end out of Esperanza, we're really excited about him. Um, we uh, as a, as a true tight end type player. Juan Martinez, a local kid out of La Jolla High School. Is a, a big tackle that we think can uh, develop into something in the in the future. Um, Ana Lagai Vele, uh, Vele um, he's also another quarterback out of Bishop San Diego, and he's a true uh, dual threat guy. Which I mean, you watch us play, you know we like the dual threat quarterbacks. So um, those are just a few of the guys. Uh, like I said, we 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 got, went into the big schools we got Charles and and it's a running back out of Chandler that got a lot of playing time at Chandler last year in the backfield uh Shannon Coulter is a receiver out of Saguaro um we're excited about him um and th- that's just a, a few of the guys that I think uh, can come in and and develop and you know for us the standard's always the standard it's not uh you know are we going to adjust to them they got to come in and and learn the system learn the culture um, and uh, hopefully they develop, and we're excited about where they are right now as, as high school guys, but the, the work has just started. Now they've got to get ready to, 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 to take that next step to a college football player. So offensive line, uh, there's been one guy maybe mentioned so far. What are you excited about that you're bringing in at the offensive line spot? Uh, well, like I mentioned, Ben, uh, ben Hurt is a, is a transfer that we, we got out of California, uh, and he's a – uh, tackle type type player. Um, Fernando Macias is a transfer back. He's a he's a bounce back into Arizona. He played at Trevor Brown High School, but he started at Mayville State last year. Um, he started for them, but he wanted to get back home, um, and he's back here and he's he's really working his tail off. I'm excited about him. He's kind of a guard guard type guy for us. Um, um, and then the, the, we'll see what happens with the freshman. Uh, as they get here, and and uh, we got paperwork on a couple before, right before the show started, uh, that hopefully we'll be talking about later. That we're pretty excited about, and uh, I, I think we will. We definitely shored up, uh, you know, the the spots that we needed to fill on the offensive line. We we lost a couple guys to graduation, but uh, we also have four of our five starters back. So so that's exciting too. You were young, but at the same time, that's good going forward uh, on your offensive line. Uh, those guys are going to be there for a few more years, as you talk, just talked about the four of the five coming back. Yeah, I mean, the people inside the program know how many injuries we had last year, and it was a boatload, uh, especially on the offensive side. We were decimated in a lot of spots. Um, that was the bad news, but even even though we were still able to win the conference and make the national tournament, which was a testament to the young men, um, that was the bad news. The good news is we did we did that with a lot of young guys. Um, so we have eight spots already, already uh, you know, have guys that are starters and a bunch more that actually played a lot last year on the offensive side. So these new guys are going to come in and fight to, you know, try to get on the bus. Getting on the bus, that's a, a quite an adventure when you travel with ACU football. Uh, sometimes you end up uh, stuck on the side of the road and using uh, duct tape to keep things rolling along. But I'm sure every football program in NAI has that type of issue. Obviously, that's going to change. Uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, let's talk defense. Uh, those, are the, are those are the guys that everybody says defense wins championships. And uh, you guys had a pretty good st- uh, stout defense last year starting in your defensive line what are you adding to that defensive line well the nice thing is we got quite a few guys back on the defensive line that are high impact guys you talk about uh you know moses smith who was one of the top producers at the defensive line spot in the country um i, I felt he was a he, he may not have been named first team all conference but he was a first team all conference player he was he was dominant uh, just asking any offensive lineman that lined up against him. Um, <laughs> they didn't like yeah, it, I'm sure. Yeah, that. But that's another story. But right. he was uh, he was definitely a top notch guy. Maurice Powell is back, so we got those two guys, and we got another. Um, you know, uh, Martin Rodriguez is back. 
Uh, ben Strawn is back. Um, you know, uh, Santan Smith is back. So we got a good core coming back. But w- we went out and uh, signed some some nice defensive linemen. Coach Harris did a great job, and we're still bringing in a few more. But uh, we got one of the top. Uh, we feel like one of the top D linemen out of the state of Washington at Bellevue, which is a, you know, they've been a national power at the high school level for years. Um, Kalani Mas- uh, Masunu. Uh, he's an interior guy. He can play outside on the edge, but we really like him inside as a defensive tackle. And I think he's going to come in and compete right away. Um, got a lot of tools. So we're excited about that. Um, you know, um, the other one that we're really excited about is is a multi-position guy, uh, Carter Hogue. Um, he actually had a preferred walk-on to the University of Arizona and uh, he chose us instead, so we were excited about getting him. Um, but um, he's uh, he can play either side of the ball, but I think he's really fired up about the opportunity on defense, and he's that hybrid outside linebacker, strong safety type of guy. That's uh, I think he he when he gets here, he's gonna he's gonna fight to get on the field uh, right away. So I'm excited about that, and then. Dominic Washington's already on campus right now. We, we brought in some other defensive backs. You said we brought in 12. Um, he, he's doing a great job uh, right now on campus along with the other guys. Uh, but he's just one that comes to mind right now on the guy of the guys that are already on campus. So defensive line, we don't even list D in and D tackle on this team because you're so versatile. Like Moses Smith last year, lined up outside, lined up inside, lined up both spots inside. You know, he was all over all four of those mm-hmm. spots. So um, it's no mistake that I only write DL for most of these guys coming in. So um, obviously they, you, you know what you need yeah. and, and you like them moving around and C- Coach Sewell likes them moving around as well. Linebackers right behind him, what have we got? Well, you know, we're, we're, we're recruiting quite a few guys there uh, still. Uh, we got some younger guys coming in. Um, at the at the linebacker spot, um, but we'll you know we'll kind of kind of see how that that plays out. Uh, Alex Payne's on campus right now, um, he and he's a, uh, a, a transfer out of a, a junior college in Texas, um, and so he's with us right now. And then uh, Tyson Sundust is from a uh, state of Washington, and and he's with us. So those two guys. We're trying to. We brought in a couple older guys, and we're still. Um, we got some uh, young freshmen that we're we're looking at um, that uh, hopefully sign with us here in the next week or two, that can come in and be impact guys also. So um, that's a process for us because, um, well, also because of the change in the conference, different styles of play. Uh, w- sometimes we're looking at guys that were de- we've signed as defensive ends that where they may end up being a linebacker or a linebacker guy that may end up being a defensive end and so forth. So we're bringing in it's just we're trying to find long, fast, athletic defensive players uh, that we can interchange throughout our, our system right now. Anybody left in the defensive backfield that you would like to talk about? We talked about 12, that being um, one of the top numbers coming in. Uh, Hogue, we've talked about a little bit, but anybody else, DB or corner that stands out? Uh, well, I could go down the list. You know, we we have and we have some uh, uh, local kids. We also have some transfers. We got a young a young man who's a transfer out of Fort Lewis, uh, Andrew Ochoa. Uh, he's in with us. A uh, kid out of uh, West Hills College. We talked about Dominic Washington, um, Adam Navarrete. Uh, he's a local kid out of a uh, small school, Surprise. I mean, uh, Superior, uh, Senior High School in, in Superior, Arizona. Um, Tariq Nang out of uh, Glendale Community College and played in the Ho-Ho-Com League. Um, he, he's committed with us. So we're going to see if the, uh, if these guys can come in and, and uh, compete. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Um, we have some solid guys on the back end. We got, uh, you know, with Jordan Francis coming back, who's a, a outstanding safety, one of the top interceptors in the country last year with six. And then uh, Griffin Meyer, who's, who started a lot of games for us. And Andrew yang a uh, freshman from last year, um, you know, he's he's going to be in the mix there too. So the, the young guys that we got in, there's, they're going to have to compete to, to earn a spot and get on the field. But 
you know, you got to have a lot of defensive backs because you got to use them on special teams too. So we'll see how that all shakes out. Well, Coach, one of the things that stands out, we've talked about the states and the positions and the, the breakdown that way, but one of the things when you look at it on paper, there's some siblings that are coming. Now, not all of the siblings that are coming are from directly from the football program, but they're like ACU, they're, their sister plays on another team, or, uh, they've, or they're grads of the school, or there are a couple of siblings. One of the ones that stands out, we're going to go with a pair of twins on the offensive line again. We've been down that road before. Uh, so how does, how does that work when – <laughs> You're dealing with families that you've worked with before. Uh, you know, we, we've we've had twins before, and, and now we have the McGlenn brothers coming in on the offensive line from Valencia. Um, uh, excited about them. Two young, uh, they're freshmen, um, and I, they're highly aggressive, passionate football players, um, a little bit undersized for, for what people normally look at, but um, – they have a passion to play the game, and, and they get after it. So, um, you know, you bring them in and you give one guy a real small scholarship and then one guy a real big scholarship and let them fight it out. <laughs> no, just just kidding. Um, but they're they're both really good football players, and uh, it's kind of uh, kind of interesting how we've always managed to end up with with twins in our program and stuff. So they're they're the next set of twin uh, offensive linemen. The Fudge brothers did a great job when they were here, and. And they're both off being successful now, got their college degrees and doing their thing. So hopefully, um, you know, Mike and uh, Vince will come in and uh, and do the same thing. Be here for four years, and we can talk about the pair of twin brothers that played offensive line at there ACU. There you go. There I like go. it. So, uh, but one other thing that stands out to me when you look at some of the where these schools have come from, as I look at it, there's a player from Fort Lewis College, there's a player from Lyon College, and there's a player, as you mentioned, uh, out of the Ho Ho Com League. Those are guys that you played against last season. Uh, we went to Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis is coming here. Uh, Lion College, longtime conference rival. They're leaving uh, the conference like the student athletic conference like we are, but they're going to Division Three. So um, you're getting a, you got a guy from Lion. You got a guy from Fort Lewis. And I think, Coach, that's just a testament to what happens at ACU football. A lot of guys go and they sign, oh, I got this great opportunity. I'm going to sign here. And then they come and they, they face you. And the and it's not that yeah we beat them but it's how we handle the business and so talk about the testament that you have and the, the legacy that's here of ACU football that you get guys that you're playing against that are like you know what I want to be on that team I think it's more than just football you know I think when young men are it's tough on them right you know and in this day and age and recruiting and portals and all those kinds of stuff and social media uh, everybody's looking for the most amazing you know gold golden cup at the end of the rainbow type of experience and uh, they get those things in their mind and they may go off and play somewhere and uh, it doesn't end up w the way they thought it was and then you start looking at more than just football because um, you know coaching staffs change but uh, is there some stability within the coaching staff where you go to you know, facilities are important, you know, and we're working to build our facilities here on this new campus, which is awesome. But if you're having a bad day, you're not going to go out and get a, a hug from the football field, you know. So it's how you deal with people, and I think uh, players notice that, you know, and it's talked about. Uh, we're not done bringing in, you know, right now we're, we're, we're not done bringing in guys that uh, were on rosters last year at other schools that played that are in contact with us wanting to come play for us. Um, you know, you, you mentioned a couple, you know, you saw a couple of guys from those schools. And then you got a kid like we just talked about, Moses Smith. We recruited him out of high school and uh, recruited him hard. We, we loved the kid. And he ended up going somewhere else, and then it wasn't what he thought it was going to be. And, not, and he was starting. He's a good student. He was starting, but it was not the experience that he thought it was going to be. You know, and he came back home with us and uh, – you know, he's like, oh, I wish I would have been here for four. And I'm like, well, I'm just glad you're going to be here for two, buddy. Um, but that's part of it. The, uh, the culture is the culture. The standard is the standard. And we're not going to deviate from that. And our young men know that. And I think they appreciate that because it's very consistent what they're going to get from, from our coaching staff, from me as a head coach, for a university, from uh, Coach Chambers in our spiritual development. And uh, I think that's what makes us unique, you know. And uh, – 
and you tie that all into a program that also wins on the football field, well, then then you got a product that families and young men are interested in being a part of. So I think that's kind of a, kind of the way we've evolved over the years. Well, Coach, uh, and anybody that has a sign uh, and you're looking for a place, this guy has a place for you, and it's a great program to be a part of. Uh, ACU football, uh, Coach Bowen leading it. You're making a big change, though, this year. You're going to the Frontier Conference, um, and one thing that I know will change in the future but hasn't doesn't reflect in this signing class, you're going to start getting into – Montana and Idaho and places like that where you're going to be able to get recruits from when they start seeing your football brand show up Mm -hmm. at those schools up that we're now going to play in a frontier conference. You're building a team to go compete in that conference, one of the toughest conferences in the NAI. How do you think you've done so far in preparing for the transition to the new conference? I think it starts, first of all, with the young men that are are still on our roster. You know, uh, we won a conference title last year, our fourth one in our school history. Uh, we played in the national tournament again. Well, we played the number one team in the country, and it's a three-point game with nine minutes to go. And uh, we showed we can play good football. So uh, our young men are looking at it. Uh, what do we got to do to take the next step, you know, um, and, and and win at the national at the national level? Uh, so starting with our returners, and they're doing a great job right now. They are working their tails off. I'm I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about our leadership development and our our core leaders that we're meeting with weekly. The 14 guys we've brought in are are fitting in, and they're training hard and learning our culture. And now for this signing class, their job is to come in and and be part of that experience. It's like I, I told them on recruiting day. If you're worried about if you're starting or how many guys are playing your position or how many catches am I going to get or how many sacks and all that kind of stuff, um, go somewhere else. You know, uh, We're about building our program into a, a national contender, and you can't do that with I guys. you got to do it with me guys. And I think we signed a bunch of me guys. Um, so we're excited about that, and that's what we're going to need to do to take that next step. Um, we, we, we've, we've gone into those places, like we got Corbin Walling out of Idaho, and he's, he's a starter for us. And, and we, you know, we, we signed uh, three kids out of the state of Washington uh, this year. So we're going to make inroads into those areas. Um, and uh, I'm excited about making that change uh, into the new conference. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, it's, it's ironic that you can go and recruit a kid in Montana, let's say, and say, hey, you know what, you're going to have an opportunity. Even though you sign with us, you're going to have an opportunity to play in your home state two or three or four times in a season because that's how the conference lays out. So they may have five home games, and, oh, I'm going to stay in Montana, but they're coming to Arizona, they're coming here, they're coming there. So even if they sign with us, there's still that opportunity to play. So the future's bright for those those uh, couple of areas as well. Oh, yeah, we're, and we're excited to get up. In, we've, we've done a good job in uh, the Washington – um, Idaho area, and we've 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 recruited up there pretty hard. Um, we haven't hit a lot into Montana. We've gone, you know, a little more into you know Michigan and and that type of area. But now that we're playing up there, I can already tell that we're starting to get some, you know, some uh, as we start to build the base roster for our the 24 class and stuff that that those kids are now interested in. Oh, you know, I can play in Arizona. They're really good, and I can still get games back home, and stuff like that. So, um, we're an attractive destination. We're a small school in a large city. There's a lot of positives about that. Uh, the weather's phenomenal. Uh, so, we're going to be a draw. You know, and everyone's like, "Coach, how are you going to handle playing in the cold weather?" Oh, I, we'll we'll be okay. We we did okay in Iowa. We didn't back down. You know, our kids will be fine. But also got to remember. That we got to go up there and play them, but they got to come down here and play us too. Right. I would love for some of those schools like Morningside, number one team we played to end the season. I'd love to see those guys here in August or September playing. And you were worried about the cold. Let's talk about playing in the yeah. heat. It's a it's a little bit different. So it's it's going to be give and take. You know, we're extremely excited about the frontier. The I've been meet, uh, had a couple meetings already with with uh, coaches within the conference and conference meetings and stuff, and they're really good guys, and it's really competitive. Um, they do it the right way. Um, and, and, again, it's a, it's a, it's a tradition-rich football conference, and you can't, you can't ask for any more than that. Uh, you know, nothing more exciting than college football on a, on a college campus on Saturday afternoon or evening. So 
um, you know, we're excited ab uh, about the challenge, and um, we'll be ready for it. Coach, final thoughts on the 2023 recruiting class of ACU football. Well, I, I, I hope they're excited. You know, I hope they're enjoying today, and uh, it's a big moment for a lot of them. Their, their high school journey's over, and their uh, the key for them to know is uh, the work's not done. Signing day is not, oh, yeah, I'm uh, I've signed. Uh, the work has just started. And uh, we have high expectations here. And uh, uh, like I said, the standard's the standard. And the culture's the culture. And uh, I'm excited to see these guys come in and see where they fit. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to build on this class heading into uh, uh, the season. And uh, we're just uh, excited about where we're at. We'll start spring ball here in a few weeks. And, and uh, before you know it, it'll be August 26th, and we'll be playing a game. August 26th, the season will start next year. Um, Coach, thanks for taking the time. I know you're excited about your signing class. And uh, for those 50 of you that have signed to play with Arizona Christian football, you are in great hands. And, again, if you have not signed on the dotted line yet, talk to this guy. He can uh, get you in the program. Uh, Coach, we look forward to, I look forward to writing about these guys and uh, seeing their futures unfold as they play for ACU football. Uh, thanks for taking the time again. And for all 50 of you that have signed, welcome to the ACU football family. For head coach Jeff Bone, I'm Tim Gosen saying have a enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Roll storm.